good morning, folks. The sun erupted yesterday. We're on the verge of a cosmic ray health alert. We've got some of the best articles in a while and more, but let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and head right to that solar eruption. The mega plasma filament we've been watching was apparently two ropes in courtship, but they broke it off yesterday with the scorn party on the north deciding that lifting straight away at Earth wasn't good enough. He wanted to go the exact opposite way of his southern counterpart. This eruption will miss Earth. Despite the eruption's size, there were no solar flares associated, and that's the Earth facing quiet stepping in as sunspots begin to return. Growing group here with magnetic stability as of now, but we will watch the central region between those umbral cores. We also have a little action on the incoming limb, that one surrounded by plagues. Solar wind continues to decrease intensity, and that's why we're approaching a cosmic ray alert today. When the KP drops all the way down, the same cardiac and neurological issues that plague high storm level periods kick in at the low end of the spectrum as well. Other notes include the northern coronal hole system coming round for his third pass by Earth as a mega opening extending past the polar field's 55 degree mark, still a few days before its streams arrive. Let's go to our top stories. Quasar light from the other side of the universe has been detected and measured, and the only conclusion that can be made is that electromagnetic force in that distant galaxy has the same importance and effect as it does here on Earth. That is a consistency that is baffling. Next, this one is our own story. So you remember yesterday we learned that two excellent drivers of solar flares are Mercury's close approach and Mercury conjoining the Earth. Well, yesterday we happened to have Mercury at Aphelion, the furthest distance from the sun, but it will swing around to perihelion the last week of this year. And right as that happens, the conjunction with Earth begins, completing before New Year's. So both that man's clues to solar flaring are about to happen in the last week of the year. He will get a good test of his model. Lastly, folks, those who follow our earthquake predictions know that everything from cloud ionization to plasma physics plays a role. These would be the Birkeland currents. But now we have a new animation of shock drift acceleration as charged particles interact with magnetic fields. What is interesting is that the final structure matches how we've modeled earthquake energy moving above and below the ground. All these links are found at suspiciousobservers.org or on the YouTube watch page. Website members, we have a new deeper look out for you about the New Zealand earthquake lights and how they fit into the earthquake prediction model. Right now, we've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.